PNC Place, 817th Street in downtown Washington, D.C., to figure out just what it takes to make a green building. We know it takes a good architect, an architect who knows about green construction and design, but it takes more than that. It takes a supportive city, a committed client, knowledgeable engineers, and a whole range of other designers to make a green building green. And it also takes another cast of characters to keep a green building green once the architect has left. And that includes the building management, maintenance, and the occupants themselves. I'm Susan Piedmont Palladino, and I'm a curator at the National Building Museum. Come with me and let's meet the green team. One of the things that PNC insisted on from the beginning was that this building be built as a LEED certified building. And our aspiration really was to shoot for the sky. So initially we said gold, but we really never really meant gold. Uh, we really wanted platinum. Um, we needed to bring together a group of, um, a group of consultants who really believed in the, in the end goal so that people were not putting up obstacles, saying things that couldn't be done, or, or saying, you know, it might be too expensive. Um, it was really um, a team effort. After the green team came together, the planning began. Sustainable design requires input from the entire team, so the ability to tackle problems creatively and cooperatively is critical. When talking with uh, Gary, I proposed, why don't we host a, an internal design competition charrette um, that would uh, engage five Gensler offices around the world um, and basically have an idea charrette. The intent was to create um, ideas that were grounded in a common philosophy about buildings that respond to um, the people that occupy them. The team, working mainly in Gensler's Washington office, set to work, attempting to meet or even exceed the lead performance requirements. It was really the goal and the vision of the project to make this project um, really, you know, not focus on how many boxes are going to get checked on what level of, of uh, sustainability, but really to make this um, a, a smart building for the future. Every decision you make from the very beginning sketch really reflects about what your attitude is towards a sustainable goal. And by having the scorecard system, not that we checked our points every week, but we did have a belief that we're going to do the best we possibly can. Because we started out with this holistic approach to the project from the very beginning, um, we weren't finding ourselves having to substitute or pay a premium. We, we said we were going to use stone, for example, but we were going to use stone within a certain geographic area of Washington, D.C., so we didn't design some Italian marble and then find ourselves having to substitute at a later date to get points. The reality is it's not a premium. You're making decisions that you think are adding value to the design, that are adding value to the people, the planet, and the performance of that building, and so you can't peel them out. Uh, in this particular building, it's a regional headquarters for PNC in D.C., uh, and, and the design team uh, along with the ownership, really felt strongly about doing as much as we could do and, and doing as much as we could afford. PNC inherited this location through its earlier purchase of the regional Riggs Bank, which owned two buildings previously on the site. So we really wanted to replace those buildings with a building that would make an impact on the community, uh, a, an impact on our shareholders in a very positive way, and an impact on our employees and customers. First, the green team needed to prepare the site for building massing that made good planning sense, and that took some cooperation from the city. Through the process, we helped to assemble the site, um, deal with any zoning issues. For example, in this site, we closed an alley, public, city public alley, and sort of put the whole physical envelope together. And what we ended up with was a really large rectangular-shaped um, site in the absolute epicenter of the Central Business District. It's walkable, uh, it's, it's a great spot for people watching, um, it's uh, a great spot to have visitors come down and visit, it's, it's wonderful, it's a draw. Locating this building here in view of the White House, the Washington Monument, uh, it's, it's like I can't believe a guy from Nebraska, which is where I grew up, is sitting here working in a place like this, it's, it's just amazing to me. The location presented its own challenges. Adding a modern, high-performance building isn't enough. It has to be beautiful enough to hold its own, surrounded by historic buildings and grand landscapes. 
and above all, contribute to the city. Our office buildings, in a way, are great building blocks to make a great city. They're not always have to be the thing that makes a great city. It is the monuments that make the great city. To the south, where we have these amazing views, the building is kind of directive. As you're walking down the street, you kind of know that those monuments, this building is looking that way. It's looking towards these amazing views. We have water clear glass. We uh, make it as open as possible. The facades, I think, are sensitive to the scale of the city, but have a level of detail that give it um, a real sophistication. You know, I'm a banker, so maybe we should keep this in, the, in here, but I think it's sexy. The building needs to be more than just beautiful. It needs to be efficient. And to attract tenants and command premium rent, the team felt it was important to announce its commitment to efficiency. How does a building express its commitment to being green? And how does a, um, how does a, 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 a tenant of that building or somebody that touches that building experience um, the greenness of the building. The solution the team came up with is an engineering marvel. So in this particular building we have a three-story water wall in the lobby that is very, very visible from the exterior of the building, which will actually heat and cool the lobby. The idea of, of using a water wall with radiant cooling to provide air conditioning for the space was scary, quite frankly. It was quite a challenge. In Washington, D.C., we have a high level of humidity and, and a transient space where the door opens and closes and you get fresh air in. You know, we're worried about rain. We, I've learned it's bad if it rains inside the building. <laughs> we're able to embed sensors right in the concrete that tell us the temperature of the concrete, which allow us to control very precisely the temperature of the floor so that we don't condense. By controlling the temperature of the floor, you can prevent condensation. The team spent months designing the water wall to address challenges just like this. The idea is that you're feeling this commitment to not have to, to over-condition, you know, over-consume energy. When I walk in in the morning, it is transformative. It's um, yeah, looking at the waterfalls, hearing, hearing them, um, feeling, the, feeling the, the, the moisture in the air. It's, it's, uh, it hits all of the senses for me. I, I, uh, I really like that. To achieve LEED Platinum certification, the type of creativity that went into the water wall needed to be applied to the building's energy systems as well. But the, really the big energy use, user is the mechanical system that's providing all the heating and air conditioning throughout the whole building. And the system uh, we used was a lot of pieces of technology that exist but we implemented them in a way that really increased the energy efficiency. Among the innovations the team designed was a ventilation system that utilizes a series of smaller fans running independently instead of a few large fans. It allows for a very precise delivery of air, cooling and heating only the space that needs it. The highly efficient cooling towers also deliver much colder air than traditional systems, so less air is pushed through the building. The result is a surprisingly comfortable building. In, in the two, two months I've been here, it's, it's been nothing but comfortable uh, temperature for me. The cooling towers that are located on the roof of the building include several other green features. In a typical system, the water would be chemically treated and essentially toxic, and that all ends up in the city's sewer system. We developed a gray water system which uses the condensation off the air conditioning systems as well as a cooling tower blowdown by going with a chemical free system and saving that water to be used for irrigation we're really killing a couple of burns with one stone. It's reducing the heat island effect, it's dealing with stormwater management, um, and it's, it's creating really an oasis uh, that has you know, just an extraordinary view. And yet buildings are not just a collection of systems. Ultimately, buildings are designed for human beings. One of the things that we don't ever want to forget is that we build buildings for people that occupy them. Um, and so very early in the process, uh, we engaged you know, some of our experts in workplace design. It's really well laid out for the way we work today. Um, because you can see from, from my office, you can, I can see a number of the people that, um, you know, that support me, that we work together on projects. 
Um, the conference rooms are very close by. Um, you know, coffee room is nearby. Everything that you spend a lot of time walking back and forth to, they're all very convenient. My favorite part of the building is the open workspace and the interaction and both the formal and the informal conversations that you have contribute to your production. We want our employees to like going to work. Employees who like going to work and like their, like their work environment tend to give better customer service. It reduces turnover. It reduces sick days. It makes happier employees and happier customers. The open and airy feeling of the space comes from a fundamental decision about the structure and enclosure. The columns have been pulled back from the edge, leaving the entire perimeter for glass. At the beginning, we talked as a group, what is sustainability and what do we really want to do here? And really what came back to it time and time again is, could we do more with less material? Which is sort of the basic premise of caring about our planet. And when you look at this building closely, yes, we pulled the columns in that made a lot of sense on the space planning for the lawyers, but also we had less columns. I mean, like Frank Lloyd Wright loved the cantilever because the cantilever structure uses less material. The idea was to basically pull in the perimeter columns 15 feet, uh, giving us a much thinner slab at the edge, which allowed us to go 9 of ceilings around the perimeter, which is unheard of in this market, maximizes the daylight penetration, and gives this perimeter, you know, really an extraordinary feel, floor to ceiling glass. In this building, um, you, no matter where you are, wherever your workstation is, you have the view of a window, so everybody can look up and see out. But those large windows brought a new challenge, how to deal with excessive daylight and heat. That's where we came up with a very deep, very functional uh, horizontal sunshade to the south wall. There are many studies done of how the sun would hit it, how to make it with the least amount of materials again, and beautifully crafted. The building's glass does more than just look good. It's also engineered for efficiency. So we really looked at a skin as, as this wrapper notion, where the east facade, we're using a little higher performance glass. It has a little bit of reflectivity, and reflectivity got a really bad name in the 70s when it was gold and, and silver and bright, but it's a reflectivity that just sort of bounces a little bit of the light that you don't need in an office space, but still allows a great deal of light that's usable light into the building. Uh, we've also on the east side used um, what's called ceramic frit in a, in a pattern that reduces some of the, the light coming low into the building. And of course, the more natural light you bring into the building, the less artificial light you need to use. The building actually senses the amount of daylight and adjusts accordingly. So you can see that light fixtures near the windows use less electricity than those toward the interior of the space. It's common sense. A lot of green engineering is common sense. When someone's not there, we don't need a light on. We don't need to condition it to the same space. You know, we, we need to turn things off when they're not in use. It allows the building to react to the occupant and not the occupant to need to react to the building. Maybe there's some conspiracy plan afoot here, but I find I'm coming to work earlier to, purely to take advantage of that early morning sun. Green innovations are everywhere even in the plumbing. The term waterless urinal, I tell you, when I first told my kids about that, they were like so disgusted. All it is, it's, it's not complicated. It's a, a finish that gets put on the, on the urinal finish so that it's, it's non-cohesive, so the, so the urine goes down the drain. And then you put a, an oil seal over top of the drain to not let the sewer gases come back up. Other bathroom features include dual flush toilets, highly efficient hand dryers, and metered faucets, which reduce water consumption by over 40%. One of my most favorite, aside from the water wall, is the, uh, the Dyson hand dryers in the bathroom. It is amazing. You can't work in this building and not be impressed or not be constantly reminded of the, the effort that's gone into design it to be environmentally friendly. Because it's just reminders like the lights going out automatically, like the water wall, like the natural light. You, you, you can't be here and not remember that. We finished our conversation with the green team and we're here on the green roof of the building to end our story. But we knew that green building was good for the environment, but it's good for so much more than that. It's good for the city, it makes good business sense, and it makes for a wonderful, healthy and productive working environment for anyone who's lucky enough to work in a building like this. And it's beautiful. 
So look for a green building in your neighborhood. And if you don't see one, be sure to ask for one.